LS1 was about simple harmonic oscillators, essentially point masses that move back and forth. And we got close to a wave when we coupled two of them. But now we're going to talk about a continuum. Okay, so continuum. So a continuum basically means if I were going to give it one of my simple definition, it is a smooth thing. that can be deformed. When you learn mechanics, first you treat everything as a point particle. All it can do is translate around. And then you get fancy and think of a big thing that can rotate, so it's no longer a point particle. But you probably never deform the object. It's always rigid. You read about a rigid body. That means it can't deform, and it can't act like a continuum. But that's what we're going to start dealing with. So the standard original continuum you always start with is the stretched string. And usually your stretched string looks kind of like this and you have it clamped at both ends. So this means a wall and here's your string and here's another wall. So it's clamped on both sides and you characterize it with three parameters. So it has a length And that's the actual length from here to here. It's not the unstretched length. It's the, basically just the length between the two clamps. It has uh, mu, which is its mass, but you give that per unit length. So an intrinsic parameter for the string. And then it is under a tension, T, in newtons. Once you have those three things, so mu is inherent to the string and t is also inherent to the string, once you have those three things, you have defined this continuum, then you can start doing calculations of what will it do. So we have a continuum here. So this is a stretch string. It's clamped at both ends. You'll see the ends later. And I can deform it. I can measure. I can feel the tension in it. I know it has a mass density because I measured it. And I know L because I set L. All those are known, and we'll use them in demos later. What we want to do is, though, is think about what all can it do. And it can do a lot of weird, wild things. Right? That's what we're going to be calculating. So how we're going to set it up mathematically is we're going to consider the displacement y as a function of uh, x at any time t. So if we want to put axes on here, then this is the y-axis. That would be a deflection of the string. So if this little piece of the string moves up, it increases its y. We could say its rest position is y equals 0. It could go negative y, it could go positive y. x is just the position along the string. Okay. And time is, of course, just time. So, but the reason this has two spatial dimensions is because it is a thing that can be deformed. When you have a rigid object, it always moves together. Maybe it rotates, but everything always has the same x. Here, you can have different positions as a function of x. And that's why we have to, uh, that's what makes it a continuum. And that's what makes the math a little bit harder.